Welcome to my first flip lesson. This lesson is on fiber evidence. Fiber evidence is trace evidence. Um, just like the hair evidence was, it is often found at a crime scene. Fiber evidence uh, has class evidence characteristics, so we can associate that fiber with a group. So we may be able to narrow it down to the type of carpet that was produced or um, what kind of material was in the specific um, coat that the fiber was traced to. So just class evidence. There has only been one case where that fiber evidence could actually be narrowed down to a specific source. And that happened in the Wayne Williams case. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. When we collect fiber evidence from a crime scene, the first type of analysis we'll do is um, we'll look at the physical properties. And that's some of what you've done with the hair. And so you will make um, observations. You'll make macroscopic observations. So you're looking at the, the, the fiber itself. And then you'll go ahead and look at the um, microscopic observations, which are those things that you see, those details that you see under the microscope. The second type of analysis, which we will do, is analyze the fiber evidence, um, analyze the chemical properties. And we'll do that a couple of ways, one of which includes um, flame tests that will be incorporated as part of the laboratory activity. And it's important to note that fiber evidence can either be direct evidence so it's transferred directly from the victim to the suspect or vice versa. Or it can be um, a result of secondary transfer. In that case, the victim would already have fibers from another source on them. And those fibers would then be transferred to the suspect. There are two main categories of fibers. The first are natural fibers. And those are fibers that come from animals and plants. And when we look at animal fibers, there's really three sources. The first is fur. And animal fur is used for coats, gloves, hats, mittens. And the three main types that are used are rabbit, mink, and fox. And when they remove, when they get collect the fur to use for um, an article of clothing, they actually take the skin and the fur together. So they skin the rabbit, or they skin the mink, or the fox. And when they take those two together, they actually will treat the um, skin to make it a little more flexible so they can mold it into the material that they want to make with it. And you can see in the pictures here that I've included that that's the rabbit pelt. So they've actually taken the skin off the rabbit and the fur. And then they use that to make um, a hat. Um, and that's a hat that I actually saw today on a student. The other type of animal fibers are hair. And hair is something that we have already looked at um, on um, animals. We actually looked at wool when we were comparing the three types of hairs. There were slides that had human um, and wool on the same slide. And what you should have noted is that both of those hairs looked very similar. They have very similar properties. And so we get the wool from the sheep. We get um, cashmere and mohair from goats. And we also get camel hair from camels that is used. And we'll see camel hairs again when we look at um, fingerprints, because the fingerprint brushes that we use are actually made of camel hair. The last type of um, animal fiber that we use is silk. And silk actually comes from the cocoon of a caterpillar. And those caterpillars are actually um, bred, and they harvest the silk from the caterpillars. Very expensive, and that's why if you go to buy something that would be f a silk, like a silk scarf, very, very expensive because the, the um, production process is timely and costly. 
And if you notice from uh, the pictures I have, I have a picture of wool, so what it would look like, um, you know, under low power in the microscope, and then what it would look like at high power. And right away, you can see it looks very much like the hair samples we've been looking at. Um, and then to the in the middle, obviously, is the sheep. And then to um, on the other side, you can actually see the caterpillar um, that's actually going to form a cocoon before it turns into a butterfly. And I also wanted to include some pictures of some, just so that you were familiar with some different sources of hair, uh, the animal hair for the fibers. There's an angora goat. You can see there's a lot of uh, hair there to be um, shaved. There's the cashmere goat, very soft, very pretty. The camel hair at the bottom. And then wool. And the wool you're familiar with making sweaters and uh, shirts, etc. There are also plant fibers. The only one I'm going to mention briefly is cotton. And cotton is a fiber that you find in just about everything you wear and it's actually from the seed pod of the cotton plant and you can see a picture um, of the cotton plant below. The next main category, the last main category of fibers are synthetic fibers and synthetic fibers are man-made. They come from chem chemicals either in some combination or some degree. Um, they include materials like there are fire, um, clothing like rayon, acetate, nylon, polyester, and different acrylics. And when we actually do our fiber lab, you'll look around and you'll see um, some of the composition. You just look at the labels and you can tell um, what fibers make up what materials. The benefit of those synthetic fibers is they're definitely more flexible. They are definitely stronger. Um, in many cases, they're used to make very attractive clothing. Um, and they're also, they have a, a lot of other properties um, that make them beneficial. And then just some pictures at the bottom. Some of the things that you'll see when you look under the microscope. And again, just some more pictures there. So that's where I'm going to end my first flip lesson today. It's just a brief introduction to um, fiber evidence. Um, and that way we can um, begin to start to do some laboratory investigation into some of the properties of different types of fiber.